Hello and welcome to Worship This Day at whatever day or time you are joining us. I'm grateful you decided to spend some time with Mountain View United Methodist Church. And if you didn't know, I'm Pastor John. I'm the pastor at Mountain View. And, uh, you know, I do all sorts of things around here and in the community. So if you're in the local area of Cottonwood, you may have seen me running around. So that's just kind of the way it goes. I do have a few announcements I want to share. First, uh, did you know we have a book club that happens on our campus? We do, and their next meeting is coming up in May, and they're working on a book, uh, they're going through a book, Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmouth. Uh, I haven't read the book, but I've heard good things about it. One of, this is one of those ministries I'm just lifting up because, you know, we have things that go on around here, and we don't get a chance to often talk about them. So I'm trying to take one every month and, and say something. So that's a wonderful opportunity. If you're interested in participating in that, please let us know. I also want to let you know coming up May 11th, which is, a, I believe, a Thursday at 8 in the morning, we're having a spring cleaning day hosted by the trustees. We could use all the help we can get. Uh, no help is too small. Though I'm sure there'll be things like weeding, but also things like, I don't know, wiping down the windows and things of that nature. Uh, all of these things we, we need done, just like any home or any other place you might visit. I also want to remind you of your giving options. A little slide will pop up that tells you where you can go to, that you can go to our website to uh, give. Or if you're uh, a member, I encourage you to do automatic giving. You can set that up through that, and that helps us remain financially stable, especially through the, the less busy months, which are coming up here in the summertime. So again, thank you for joining us this day, and I'd like to invite you to please bow your heads in prayer with me. Let us pray. Holy One, we are often confused by the events in our world. Come and walk with us. Open our hearts to hear your truth. Plant the seeds of new life within us. In trust of your loving presence, we pray. Amen. Now today I have two scripture readings. The first one I'm reading from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 30 through 31. Listen for the voice of God. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. The second reading comes from 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 16. Now, therefore, take your stand and see this great thing that the Lord will do before your eyes. Here ends the reading of God's word for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We are in our It's a Musical series. This is our second week of it, and the musical this week is Come From Away. There should be a link down at the bottom for the song that I'm basing the reflection on, and I encourage you to follow that link and watch the song. It'll help you understand what it is I am talking about. So hit, the, hit pause. Go watch that. Or whatever. This is a musical that I did not want to see when I was first told about it. Uh, the subject matter is 9-11. It's not a subject that I take lightly, and it's not one that I tend to talk about a lot. I, I didn't really know how a musical was going to talk about it and not turn it into some either weirdly patriotic thing or this drama nonsense. I, I, I didn't know how they were going to do it. However, since I've watched it, it's become one of my family's favorite musicals. The, the basic premise of the musical is that there is a small town of Gander in Newfoundland, Canada, where 38 planes were di diverted after the U.S. closed its airspace during 9-11. The, the town's population doubled in size, and the show details and deals with all the issues that arise from that. Uh, one of the special things about this show is that it actually takes real people's experiences and uses that to tell the story. And it blends from one to the next to the next and uh, with characters playing multiple parts. The song that I chose to base our reflection from uh, comes from the story of Nick, an, an Englishman who works for an oil company, and Diane, a divorced mom who was traveling home from visiting England for the first time. 
we are introduced to the pair uh, as they first meet at the beginning of the show when Nick is trying to avoid the drunken passengers in the back of his plane. So he comes up and asks if he can sit next to Diane, who had an empty seat next to her, so that he could get some work done. The song Stop the World comes a few days later in, and takes place in Gander. Uh, when everyone is, they, they kind of had a false start where they all thought they were going to be taking off. They all loaded up on the planes, but then they got let back off the plane because there was a problem on the runway. Nick and Diane walk to the top of Dover Fault and experience a, a moment together with the realization that they are going to be separating again soon. Uh, Nick and Diane sing in the song that they, don't, that, that they want the world to stop stop because they don't want to leave the moment that they're in and and Nick is taking pictures of all this but he knows that the pictures only capture a moment because once the moment passes it's done. National tragedy can have that effect on us. One of the things the show did for my family and I was provided a spot and a space for Katie and I to talk about and reflect on where we were when the events of 9-11 happened. I know many of us can talk about where we first learned about what happened or we first saw the images and, and how we felt on that particular day. For many, the result was much the same as Nick and Diane's ex experience. It created a sharp distinction be between what life was like before and what they valued before and where they were at then and where they would go from there. Uh, COVID has actually been that, the same way for many people. Uh, over the past two years, many people have moved to be closer to family and, and uh, because when, they, when everything was shut down, they realized how much they missed their family and relied upon family. The key to this experience and the key to understanding Nick and Diane is, to knowing, is knowing that most of us don't stop or slow down. We fill our days with work and appointments and, and we never stop to reflect, uh, to reflect on the whys or to reflect on what we hold most important. I confess, I, I have this problem myself. I will work, work, work and run, run, run until my body says, that's enough, stop. And there was a time I was better at stopping, um, but the push to run and do uh, and to, to do more and more always creeps up on all of us. And it forces our priorities to change. When, when you're forced to work, 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 run, 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 it makes the priorities work or whatever the thing is you're doing and not maybe the people in your life or things of that nature. Our scriptures today are ones that reflect on the need to stop. In Isaiah, we are reminded that even the young grow weary. Often when I've heard this passage, people reflect on the need to rest, but don't reflect on the need to slow down. And, and yes, there is a difference. It's not always possible to stop and rest. I, I know that. And, and, and I fully affirm that, yes, we must do that. But it is often possible to slow things down. It doesn't matter if a task takes you an extra five minutes. The only pressure you often have for completing that task quickly is yourself. You know, I, I remember when the kids were little, both of them did this in different ways, but they would play all day, not wanting to go down for a nap. And then at some point, they would randomly fall asleep. Uh, I remember one time in particular, so Sophia fell asleep standing up. Uh, the, we had a, a, an ottoman, and she had half her body, her upper, upper half of her body on the ottoman with her feet touching the floor, and she was out completely, just exhausted and we laugh at kids doing this because you know they fall asleep in awkward positions and a lot of us wonder you know how they can wake up from that position and not feel you know any type of aches or pain but you know we as adults do the same thing we work till we're exhausted and we can't maintain that the the first samuel passage reminds us to look at what god has done and stop the world in that song, one of the things that helped Nick and Diane's reflection is seeing the beauty of creation. Stopping and noticing what God has done and, and is doing in the world helps us to deprocess. 
you know, watching the thunderstorms roll in during monsoon, seeing the sunrises or the sunsets, noticing the flowers and the bees. All of these types of things help us to heal as individuals so that we can really prioritize what is most important in our lives. This type of, of stopping is not about stopping and recovering so you can do more work and work harder. Uh, unfortunately, I've seen this as, as often championed uh, among pastors. It's you can't take care, if you, if you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of others. And I want to get at something a little different here. What we're talking about is not about stopping for others. This isn't about stopping so that you can recover to work more. Uh, that is definitely something that is emphasized in our culture. God wants you to rest because you are worthy of being you. It has nothing to do with what you produce or that you can rest so that you can work more. It has to do with you can rest because you deserve to rest. God wants you to notice that God is at work in the world and God has done it for you and for everyone. This creation is beautiful for everyone. You don't have to deserve it. It just is. Uh, too often we talk about resting and stopping the world so that we can recharge and do something. And I don't believe that's the lesson from this show, from the events of 9-11. I don't think that's the, the lessons from these scriptures. I think the lesson is stop, slow down, take a moment. Every moment is a gift. It's, it's not a moment to recover so you can jump back into the rat race. It's not a moment to recover so you remember what you forgot to do. But to stop, stop the world. Take a moment. I encourage you, take a moment and see that God loves you and how much you love others. Stay happy, healthy, and safe this week. Amen.